the CIO for Volusia County Schools. And as you know, there have been threats that have been made against schools across Florida and here in Volusia. So we have here today Superintendent of Schools, Tom Russell, and Volusia County Sheriff um, Chipwood to talk to you about the threats that are specific to our schools. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Russell. Thank you, Nancy. Good afternoon. On behalf of Volusia County Schools, and I'm sure the Sheriff's Department, our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are ongoing for our neighbors in Broward County that have suffered so much. Everyone in Volusia County wants safe schools, and I need help from parents. I need help in three areas. The first is to see something, say something. If a child is at school and they see something, they need to speak to a trusted adult. In the evening, if they have a conversation with a friend or they see something on social media, they need to tell their parents. The second area where I need the help of parents is they need to monitor cell phone activity and social media activity of their student. As parents, they have a right to do this. And the third area, they need to check the backpack. You need to know what your child is taking to school and what they're bringing home. So if they work on see something, say something, monitor cell phone activities and social media, and then also uh, check backpacks, that will help us immensely. I want to be abundantly clear. If a student makes a threat, they will be held accountable. Much like all of Central Florida today, we have had uh, social media threats, all unfounded, and um, we will not accept that. The purpose of a threat is to instill fear. Fear in students, teachers, administrators, parents, and grandparents. And as a community, we are not going to accept that. And finally, I want to assure our community, and I'm sure that uh, Sheriff uh, Chipwood can verify this, that Volusia County Schools have safety, have safety and security plans and protocols in place, and we have heightened uh, security at our schools over the last several days. Sheriff? Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, good afternoon. I, I, I think there isn't any of us who are uh, Americans or Floridians who have not been touched once again by this horrific act in Broward County. And as the superintendent said, our number one goal in law enforcement is to work hand in hand with the school administrators to create a safe environment for our children. None of us want to drive our kid to school and kiss them goodbye and fear what's going to happen the rest of the day, the rest of the day when we go to pick them up. But there's a serious uh, a thing that has been going on here, in not only in our county in Central Florida, but all over America. And I just want to share what's going on. The aftermath of this tragedy is not the time for jokes, pranks, or fake threats. If you're looking to get a felony arrest on your record, continue with the stupid jokes and the pranks. And if you don't believe it's going to happen, look at what happened today at Heritage Middle School where a 14-year-old talked about blowing up the school or shooting up the school and ended up in handcuffs and ended up in jail. We are constantly trolling social media for these threats. And guess what? We're smarter than you. We're going to find you. And you're going to find the sheriff and his deputies on your front doorsteps arresting you. So I'm telling the parents now, as the superintendent speaks, talked about, check your kid's backpack, look at what your kid's doing on the phone, and, be, and don't be surprised if we show up and we're going to make an arrest. We are not taking this lightly. We've had 15 false threats in the past two days. And involving in those threats, I have to run out a bomb squad, canine, all of these resources that go toward a fake threat that are diverted, God forbid, if they were really needed while they're spread out through the rest of the county. We pursue every lead that is given to us as a potential threat. So when you get these hoaxes that come in, they're muddy in the waters of where we really need to go. The truth is that law enforcement, as I talked about, we're constantly monitoring these posts. But there are many cases where we identify these idiots. And one of the disconcerting things for us in law enforcement and for school administrators is these morons post themselves on social media with guns. And I will also implore our community at this point in time 
that over 179 firearms were taken out of unlocked cars in Volusia County in 2017. And the majority of those firearms are being taken by juveniles. When they hit a subdivision and they hit the car door handles, if the car door is open and the gun's in there, those guns are falling into the hands of juveniles. And then those guns, in turn, are being used against the hardworking, honest people of our community. So our message here is really simple. Knock off the pranks, knock off the jokes, so that we're able to do our job. And as you've heard the Sheriff of Israel say in, uh, in Broward County, if you see something, say something. Go to a teacher, go to law enforcement, go to Crime Stoppers. If you think there's a potential threat in our community or your school, report it. Not this nonsense where we're recopying posts from different states. Uh, like last night, we invested a ton of time on a post that came in from South Carolina. Well, originally, we don't know that. But then we investigated and discover that it originated in South Carolina and was reposted here in Florida. And I think we're, you're going to see uh, some, of these, some of these tweets that are behind us. This is a difficult time for America. Parents, you really have to talk to your kids. You have to understand what your kids are doing. You have to listen to your kids. And if you get information, direct it to us. But I also need parents to come down hard on their kids because you don't want to see your kid getting a felony charge that's going to follow them for the rest of their life because they think it's funny to exploit what is going on down in, down in South Florida. You know, I would like to send this 14-year-old and some of the other ones we catch down to South Florida and have them sit in a room with the family members who lost a loved one. I'd like to have them sit there with the family of the teacher who was trying to coach who was trying to protect his students and see what's so goddamn funny about that. So with that, Andrew, do you want to uh, play, the, play the, uh, the tweets? Yeah, we can, or Jeff, you want to run through those? <laughs> This is the one that came from Spartansburg, South Carolina. And uh, what we saw as, as, uh, as time passed is students um, would Photoshop this and they would change the name of the school. So that would have uh, school A is, is going to be a target and then someone else would go to school C. And so this is, uh, this is the one that came from South Carolina uh, that uh, Sheriff Chitwood referred to. This one's New Smyrna Beach High School. Uh, Summer will post. You want me to go through these? Real yes, sir. These are. This is a New Smyrna Beach High School post this morning uh, that was out there late last evening. This morning we went ahead and dressed it immediately with law enforcement as well. Uh, this is one from University High School yesterday afternoon, late afternoon. We were notified after school was dismissed. Uh, this was investigated immediately as well. Uh, we tracked down the phone number and the sheriff uh, actually took care of that for us as well. Uh, this is another post here, uh, same one, this is from the New Smyrna Beach area, uh, was posted out there, uh, and also in River Springs Middle School area, uh, those, that post was out there for River Springs Middle School, we had one similar for uh, the high school in New Smyrna Beach. Uh, this one was, was uh, Pine Ridge High School and uh, Deltona High School, uh, and skills has video with that as well, and that's the other part of that picture of videos that were there. You guys have any questions for being a superintendent? When the school district gets these threats, what do they do to make sure parents are notified of them in a timely manner? Uh, when the school system gets the threat, the first thing we do is we involve law enforcement. We begin threat assessment uh, so that process can begin. Uh, and then uh, the school principal notifies the district. Uh, they work with Mr. Aiken and then also with Ms. Waite and we prepare what we call a connect ed that goes home, uh, that is sent home to the parents that evening. The parents at that school, uh, and for instance, the, the story that many of you covered at Pine Ridge, the parents knew about it last night. One of the things you should know is the, the uh, what you don't see behind the scenes is how hard we work together with the superintendent and his staff. You know, our SWAT teams uh, do, do assessments in the summertime when there's nobody in the schools. Uh, I went to uh, Spruce Creek High School yesterday, and uh, I was impressed at what, what the security measures were in place that was put in, in place by the school district. They're, 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 but, but as we all know, all of those steps don't mean a damn thing if we're not able to get the information to come to us that there's an active threat. And I'm going to pontificate here for a minute. I don't want the superintendent to not tell him what I was going to say. 
but uh, and I don't want anybody to be taken by surprise with this. The day of waiting for Tallahassee or Washington, D.C. to protect our kids is not coming. Since 1999, okay, in Colorado, at Columbine, we have been hearing from our elected officials that we're going to have gun control, that we're going to have better mental, mental health facilities, that we're going to do this and we're not going to do that. And since 1999, how many school shootings, how many families are in mourning, how many massacres? I, I don't know the number, but I know it's an awful lot, and it's not stopping. And every time we have one of these, you turn on the TV, and we have all this lip service, but nobody's got the guts to step forward with a plan. But I'll tell you, there's a plan that's being experimented with in Polk County. And I agree wholeheartedly with Sheriff Judd. And I think in Florida, we can end these shootings. We have 70, 67 counties. You have 66 sheriffs. We have the ability, and I think this, is, this should be up for debate, we have the ability to deputize school administrators, coaches, whoever, send them through training, arm them, and let nobody else know they're armed. Because if you take a look at some of our high schools here, you just saw what happened in Broward. You take a look at Spruce Creek, for example, 3,000 plus students. You look at uh, university, 4,000 plus students. Campus is a quarter mile long. If a deputy's in good shape and runs an eight minute mile, it would take him two minutes <laughs> to get to the scene of a shooting where that person has already fired hundreds of rounds at down range in those two minutes. But if we can get past this shock of well, do we really want to arm people? How many ex-law enforcement officers or teachers? How many ex-military are there? How many teachers do we have who are good citizens that have, a, that have a concealed firearms permit? It wouldn't cost a lot of money. We train them. They go through four or 500 hours of training. They're armed. They're there. And nobody knows except the principal who's armed. That's the only way you're going to stop these guys. Because they're going to kill themselves. And the quicker we can put them down, the less carnage that there's going to be. But the debates about mental illness and everything else, it's not, it's, it's, we're going to keep debating it, and our children are going to die. And it has to stop. It has to stop. Because the problem with American society is we're, we're, we're conditioned that, oh, it's another school shooting again. That's why you have these posts. We have these kids that have grown up in a sense of violence, and they just they think it's mirth and merriment, and we'll post these things out. But the time to solve the problem is now. There should not be another shooting in America. And if there is, we should be in a position to put down that shooter. When we do active shooter training for churches, I encourage the pastors. Yeah, we told you how to hide, run, hide, and fight. We told you to hide the room, turn off your cell phones, uh, don't make any noise, and if God, God forbid, grab a fire extinguisher and attack the shooter. Well, we tell the pastors, you know who's in your congregation. Arm them. Only you need to know. You only need four or five guns in that church. If somebody comes in, you know when those five guys stand up, Everybody else is diving, they're going to take the threat out. And we really need to have a serious conversation because you're not going to protect your kids passing laws. Pass all the laws in the world, mentally ill people are going to get their hands on guns. An example I just said, there's 179 guns were taken out of unlocked cars. And they get sold on the streets. Nobody does a background check when they're selling them on the streets. This year, that's since... 2017. 2017. Oh, 2017. 2017. Thank you, 162 car breaks, 179 <laughs> guns. All of those car breaks... Those cars were unlocked. So we can pass all the legislation you want to say if you're mentally ill, you're not going to get a gun. But if you know Joe the Thug and he says, I'll send you a gun for 20 bucks, he ain't doing a background check on you. Sorry. I didn't mean to jump in here and get all fired up. <laughs> Have you charged anyone else for these threats besides the kid at Heritage? Uh, Heritage uh, young man is the, uh, is the first one we charged. And last night, as the texts were coming in, I gave the order out that there is no mercy. Everybody gets charged. They get charged with a felony. This is the, in this climate today. I don't want to hear about civil citations. I don't want to hear about anything. If you're that stupid and callous, get locked up. Sheriff, sure, sure, this idea with deputizing some staff at the schools, is there anything you would have to do to make that happen? And does it have to go through Tallahassee? Or is that the, no, as the county sheriff, if, if the, and again, this, I haven't told the superintendent, so it's unfair to spring it on him. That, that's something the school board would have to bet. But if the school board agreed and said, we want to try this, it could be done. It just, I, can't, I can't mandate it, and it would be unfair for me. That's why I said, this is a thing to debate. You know, And I, I'll be honest with you. Ten years ago, when I first became the police chief in Daytona Beach, and this came up, I was kind of reluctant to it. But now, when you watch this happen repeatedly, and I mean, you know, I'll give University uh, High School for an example. 
I have uh, at least two former law enforcement officers who teach there. Same thing in New Smyrna Beach High. They already have the credentials. And like I said, you put them through it. I think Grady Judd, it was a brilliant idea. And he has a, a, a pilot program going down here in Polk County. You gotta go through all the training as a regular deputy. You only have authority on the campus, and that authority only goes to if you have a violent felony on campus where somebody's wielding a knife or a gun, and, they're, and it's active, and you, you have to take them out. You gotta take them out. Because that's, these guys, I'm surprised this kid was alive. But I guess he wants to share in the glory or whatever he thinks is gonna happen here. But they're gonna continue and kill as many people as they can. And the objective is take them out before they get that body count. They're gonna beat us because they know what they're doing. They're gonna have to jump on us. But we have enough people there that can take them out. Any of those among those 15? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'll take it too. Like, this happens to some week. You know, a bomb landed in uh, the middle school this week. They break something over the wall. Well, we got to roll out on that. Somebody called, leaves a backpack outside. He calls mm -hmm. in. Bomb outside, you know, whatever school. And we got to respond out there. So these these hoaxes happen to us all the time. And of course, they we went at early dismissal. I don't want to take a test. And, you know, our, our position is we're coming after you. You know, and, and I want to charge the parents for the response time, which could be sometimes five thousand or ten thousand dollars worth of resources went out there uh, to do these things. Uh, the most common threat that we see, and, and, and as reporters, you saw this last year uh, throughout Central Florida, um, is that blanket threat uh, in the restroom where it says, you know, uh, we're going to shoot up the school on this date, and so uh, that's what we see, and that's what we deal. That's the most common threat that we have. But here again. You know, you're instilling fear. And so we contact the parents, you know, of whose children go to that school and, and say that, you know, we have a threat. And uh, so that's the most common one that we deal with. We also, uh, every now and then, we quite a bit on uh, Instagram more than anything, you know, that, that part of social media. And also, I know you mentioned monitoring the social media accounts and that. But, for example, my son actually got a couple of those last night on Instagram. Um, Obviously, you don't want people sharing those as well. And what should they do if they see those? Contact law enforcement right away. Because we, or the, Crime Stoppers. The sad, yeah, and, the, and, and the superintendent just said it, Crime Stoppers. You have law enforcement. You have a teacher. You have the, you have the school board. And they're monitoring what's going on, too. I mean, they're, they're, just, they're on top of this probably more so than we are. Because, they, you know, they're checking. They, they're, they want nothing more than a, than a safe environment. And they go, I cannot, t I cannot tell you in my 12 years here, uh, what a great report we have in working with the school board to keep our children safe. I mean, I, I think it, I just think it's an excellent partnership, and uh, they have zero tolerance, like we have zero tolerance. You know, they don't. Nobody wants this. But you, you, if you get it, you got to you got to let us know. You have to let us know, and that's that's what's so frustrating about these things because you get so many of them that you cry wolf long enough, you're opening the door for something to really happen. Because you get so many of them, it, it, human nature says, "Okay, here we go again. It's another, it's another threat." And you know what? It only takes one of those thousands of fake posts to come in to do the damage. What can you all do with the rest of the numbers? Like in class, I mean, in class, they all are different. Had he had any disciplinary actions or problems before? Do we know anything about his history? I, I do not at this time. 